Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to this class where we are going to discuss the first section in chapter 3 of the research proposal and the section is titled research paradigm. Now why are we saying it is the first section yet it is numbered 3.2? It is because 3.1 is an introduction of the chapter to the reader. In our previous lesson, we have explained the meaning of research methods and research methodology. And the reason why we have explained so that we can differentiate the two terms is because chapter three of the research proposal is titled research methodology. And we have said research methodology deals with explaining the methods that the researcher uses to answer the research problem, whereas research methods deals with the techniques or tools of conducting research. So we are starting the first section which is on research paradigm. So at the end of this lesson you should be able to explain the meaning of a paradigm, identify the three basic questions about one's beliefs, discuss the three paradigms that a social science researcher can anchor his or her study on and then explain the requirements of section 3.2 of the research proposal. We discussed paradigms in details in lesson 9. So this lesson is to only highlight what the researcher needs to have in the section 3.2. So which are the sections of chapter 3 of the research proposal? So we have previously in our lesson mentioned that we have 10 subsections. So today we are discussing section 3.2. So what is a paradigm? And before we explain a paradigm, maybe we need to remind ourselves that as human beings, we have beliefs that guide our way of living. And there are many beliefs that we hold, even where we live, even where our children go to school, even the way we relate to our friends or our neighbors, all of them are guided by the beliefs or what you would say the values that we hold in our life. Now when we bring it to research, we talk about paradigms as a set of beliefs and this set of beliefs are also called philosophical assumptions. They are also called world views that guide researchers when they are conducting research. So what we are talking about is research is concerned with generation of knowledge. So there are those researchers who uh, uh, explain that the best way to gather this knowledge is using this particular method. And the others who will say no, that may not be the best. The best way to gather this knowledge so that we answer the research uh, problem would be this one. And then there are those who came, why are we saying mine is the best and or mine is the best? Why don't we borrow a little from here and a little from here and we have a mix of the two. So the set of beliefs that will guide the researchers when they are conducting and anytime we say when we are conducting research, remember it is how we want to gather knowledge regarding a phenomena is what is referred to as a paradigm. It therefore means that without a paradigm then your research lacks orientation, it lacks focus, it lacks direction because you must be telling your readers that I am guided by the following beliefs as I conduct this particular research. 
a paradigm will direct research by specifying the choice of what you want to study, how you are formulating the hypothesis to explain the phenomena observed, and how you identify the most suitable empirical research techniques. So it therefore means that a paradigm directs research by identifying the methods and methodology. And this is what we have explained in uh, our previous lesson. So you can see that if you do not have a paradigm, then your research has no direction. It has no focus because how will the reader know why you selected the particular methods and methodology? So one of the functions of a paradigm is to uh, establish acceptable research methods and methodologies and these acceptable uh, methods and methodologies are based on the researchers beliefs or philosophical assumptions or the world views. These beliefs center around three basic questions. In other words, we also call them the philosophical assumption. And the first one is, does reality exist? And because we are social sciences, then we will ask, does social reality exist? And that is ontology, the nature of reality. Is it knowable? Is this reality knowable? And this is the nature of knowledge, which is epistemology. And then if it is knowable, how can we acquire knowledge about it? And that is the question of methodology. So these three questions must be at the center of a research study so that the researcher will be able to identify the methods and methodology that they are going to use to answer the research uh, problem. So we start with ontological question. This is a question of what? We have said it asks the question, does social reality exist? What is the nature of reality? and the assumptions that the researchers have about the way the world operates. When we talk about reality, in very simple terms, we, we are talking about the world around the researcher. Ontological quest, uh, question asks if the world of phenomena is real and objective, or is it multiple or subjective? And once the researcher is clear on the ontological question, this shapes the choice of what to study based on how the researcher views the phenomena or the world around them. And it will become more clear when we look at methodology. So ontology, we have said it deals with the what of social reality. Epistemology, this refers to the nature of the relationship between the researcher and the researched. So it deals with the question of who and what of research. So it concerns it itself with the question of what is or should be regarded as acceptable knowledge in a discipline. As you go out to collect data, as you go out to answer the research problem, what will be regarded as acceptable knowledge that will answer the research uh, uh, problem? It regards the knowability of social reality and above all focuses on the relationship between the observer, that is the re the researcher and the reality observed, that is the phenomena or what is being researched. So the relationship between the two, how the researcher gains knowledge from the researched or from the phenomena or from the reality is the epistemological question. Then we have methodological question, the how. So methodological is a question of how. How can we study the social reality. How shall we study the social reality? So we know now, does it exist? What is the relationship between the researcher and the, the, the world? And then how can we study it? And all what we are talking about at the methodological question is what we discussed in lesson 61. So when we talk about paradigms, they 
rest on these three philosophical assumptions or these three basic questions. Therefore, these three questions, they guide the choice of the paradigm that the researcher will use to anchor their study on. And remember, there are so many paradigms, but in social science research, we mainly use three paradigms. Will your study be anchored on positivism, pragmatism, or interpretivism, or which is the same as con or constructivism. And this is what we discussed in details in lesson nine. So once you have identified the paradigm, then it informs the research methods and methodology that will apply to answer the research question. Now this table uh, summarizes the paradigm with their three set of beliefs or the three basic questions. So when you have positivism, positivism as far as reality is concerned, they believe that it is one, objective and fixed. And this reality is also observable and when you are gaining knowledge, you use methods that are highly scientific. And the main methodology that is used is the quantitative methods. Interpretivism or constructivism, they believe that reality is multiple and it is individually constructed. And therefore, knowledge, which is epistemology, is gained through in-depth understanding of phenomena and you therefore use qualitative methods. Pragmatist borrows the two, both uh, see, uh, they believe that uh, reality is single and multiple and you generate knowledge by combining objective knowledge and in-depth investigation of phenomena and the main method that is used is the mixed method. So now when a researcher now is uh, uh, writing section 3.2 on research paradigm, what are the requirements? In this section, the researcher should address the following. One, mention the proposed paradigm for the study. This is where they will state and explain by defining the paradigm. And then the second part they need to do is to define the basic consideration of that paradigm. What is the paradigm about? If you are anchoring your study on pragmatism, what is it about this paradigm? Then also they need to mention other studies that have been anchored on the paradigm and also state its strength and weaknesses. Then finally they need to answer the question, why and how has the paradigm shaped my study? In other words, as you explain how the paradigm has shaped your study, you are also telling the reader why you are anchoring your study on this paradigm, yet it has got the limitations that you have mentioned under section B. So this should be about half a page where you tell the reader the three items that we have mentioned. And this brings us to the end of our lesson today. In this lesson, we have uh, talked about a paradigm as a set of beliefs that are held by researchers regarding the research process. We have also explained the three philosophical questions that gives rise to the paradigms that helps us to explain the research methods and research methodology. In our next lesson, we are going to discuss section 3.3 in chapter 3 of the research proposal and this section is titled Research Design. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel, to like and share this video with your friends and also ask any question you have regarding this lesson in our comment section.